You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. Man, we are here once again with another guest, man. We are going to be talking about leadership. We're going to talk about business. We're going to talk about development and the process of all that that it takes. We have the one and only Kyle Gillette. Man, he has an amazing website that you can go visit. It is blueshirtcoaching.com. Man, first and foremost, I want to say thank you taking time to schedule Kyle talking to us, man. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So, man, before we dive into your business, man, you, you also have a, a book that people can check out on your website and they can go to Amazon. Uh, it's it's uh, it's cool to see when people are always active. I feel like a lot of people on my show who are just doing real big in their business and their in their community and in their industry, it's because they are just active. They're they're like fearless of just making new mistakes overcoming those dark seasons by just pulling through and making things work. So, man, let's start out with your story, man. What inspires you to become a small business owner and a leader, man? Yeah, well, I grew up in a in a household where my dad was an orange farmer and he started his business when he was in his mid-20s and my sister had just been born and he went after it. And in retrospect, after talking to him about that, it's kind of crazy <laughs> that he would he would dive into put all his money into this into this farming business and, and go for it. But now now he has thousands of acres that he's helping to farm and he's getting ready to sell his business, I think, here in the future. And that has been a big piece of my inspiration. Secondly, I worked for a men's mentoring program for about nine years in three different roles. And when I stepped into my first role there, my life was a complete dumpster fire. It was a complete mess. And I was charged with leading these guys that also had lives that were a complete mess. And so when I stepped into that, I knew I had to change. I had to adjust and I had to shift. And so I started to to do the work of that. You know, I, I started to have my life and my mindset and all those other things straightened out. Uh, I, I'd lost the weight I needed to lose. I was 40 pounds overweight. I lost the weight. I ran a half marathon. I started to lead these guys in such a way that I could be an example. And since then, I've continued to have opportunities to lead, opportunities to pursue things that are harder than I want them to be, but are worth pursuing. <laughs> and I, I, I get it from the inspiration of what my dad did for me in my life and running a business. And then also the inspiration of leading those guys for the, those nine years. And you were able to just build a brand and, and use all those things you learned to really apply yourself. And I think that's the key. Like once you start applying everything that you have been learning along the way in life, you start to eventually get better because if you don't, you'll know, really quickly or sooner or later <laughs> why things just are not clicking for you when you started your brand what were some of the uh, tricky areas if you will that that uh, informed you that you know what I right, I need to grow in this area in order for this area to grow honestly there's there was fear you know and when you I, I recently rebranded to blue shirt coach and I, I had it focused a little bit more generically on leadership coaching and business coaching in general. And then I realized that my heart and my love when it comes to coaching people is people that run are running home services businesses or blue collar businesses. And I was a little bit forced. My hand was a little bit forced because the brand that I had before, I was told by a monster mega company that I can't use that brand and they're going to take me to court if I don't stop. <laughs> so so instead of, I tried to fight it for about nine months and, and instead of going all the way to the court, we, we figured it out, but um, I switched and it was scary because people were coming to me at, before this, they were just coming to me and it wasn't that difficult to get new clients. I was getting three clients a month without trying. And now with this shift, now I'm in an industry where people don't know who I am and I'm learning how to brand to that. So the big, the big obstacle right now is, okay. Get over your concerns and your fears. You know how to do this. You've done this before. You've done this many years and you've helped many people do this. It's not that challenging. And so day after day, it's overcoming 
those fears that we have, right? We, we get these fears and they're only, they're only truly going to be fears that we succumb to if we don't act just like you're saying at the very beginning of this podcast. And so right now in this season, I'm learning that the importance of what you said at the beginning is even more important when you're going after this niche that you love, but also is new to you. So it's been a, it's been a fun journey and, and a bit scary, but I'm, I'm glad to be in it. This is Audrey Focus Radio talking to our guest for today. And man, when you are helping your your own community, you know, this platform now gives you the opportunity to empower people. What are some of the ways that you are finding yourself being a source of empowerment to the people that you interact with with your business? Yeah, the the book I wrote is called Sage Leadership. And it's a four-part framework for helping people become people-first leaders. And what I've found is that method, that framework has completely shifted and changed people's leadership businesses and then also those that they're leading. Because SAGE is an acronym that stands for four four things. Self-awareness, and I I see that as the the foundation of leadership. It's It's the bedrock. And if you don't have that foundation in place, you can't build a leadership house on top of it. Accountability is the nails that hold your leadership house together. Without accountability, your leadership is going to crumble. Whether that's accountability external where it's helping you or accountability internal where you're making sure you stay accountable and also across the way, right? Where you're holding other people accountable in your business. And then growth is the walls and the roof. And that's the idea that we have to shift and change things and remodel our leadership to fit the circumstances of the business and the people that we're leading. And finally, as you put all three of those together, then you get to empower and empowerment is the windows and doors. And that's where people see into your leadership and they want a part of it because it's pretty cool what you're doing. They're seeing the influence that you're having. They're seeing the impact your business is having on the people within it, the customers and the community at large. And as I've coached in that framework and taught people those four leadership pillars, and then they start to think about them and embrace them, it's shifted their businesses and their leadership significantly. So that that is the the model that is the passion, the desire that that came to me in the middle of the night. But um, that's what that's what I lean into every day. That's a great illustration, though, what you just broke down, because, man, someone right there. <laughs> I'm like, I wish I would have thought about that one first, because I really like the last part when you talk about the windows and the doors, because that just got that has me thinking like, man, that's so true. Uh, you you can't really open up doors and opportunities for people if if you're not putting yourself in a position to do that to do so. You know, uh, has someone talked about how you know you really you really just have to do it. Like you can't just you can't read your way out to opportunities because mm-hmm. if you read but don't act. Then it's, it's pointless. You just read it or you just read about it. You know, if you're trying to really change, you have to actually take that action and just take it. Even if there's days where you don't take it as much, that's fine. But the point is you got to be ready to just keep going. I had someone on my show who said, if you stop going, you prove everyone else right. But if you keep going, then you're the one that's going to make it right because it's your choice at the end of the day. If we're being real with our audience today, how many times has Kyle been in that situation where he felt like he wanted to quit, but he kept going? Share that with the audience. Yeah. I mean, I was, when I first moved out here to the Pacific Northwest, my wife and I moved from Central Coast to California. I had a fantastic job working in that men's mentoring program. Absolutely loved it. And then when we left, uh, I had to start applying for jobs up here and I, we didn't know anybody besides her family and they, they don't have really great connections because of the industry that her dad was in. And I ended up applying to 90 jobs the, for the first round of interviews. And I can't tell you how many times I wanted to quit. I, I just, I was applying for anything and everything I could think of 
because for whatever reason, running an, a nonprofit and running a pet resort didn't count to anybody. And so I started to feel like a loser. I felt like an imposter. I felt like we made the wrong decision. All these things were going through my head and it was breaking me apart. Not to mention I was living with my in-laws because we were trying to get a house out here. And eventually we did. And obviously we moved out, but man, applying to that many jobs, only getting two interviews. It was, it, I felt like I could quit every single day. I just felt like I was doing nothing that mattered for my family or for why did we even move in the first place? And it was a terrible spot, but obviously when you apply to that many jobs and you go through that process, I'm not quitting and eventually landed me a really crappy job, which then gave me a, a much better job moving forward, which then catalyzed starting this business. So all of it was meant to be. And had I had quit or just kind of given in to some other, some other situation, I, I would not be talking to you and I would not have impacted the hundreds of people or probably thousands of people by now that I've impacted. Yeah. I feel like sometimes we, we see the end product of a lot of other people around us and their successes and what they've been able to accomplish. But we don't, we don't realize they too had to start out with a blueprint and like dreams can be in the early stage. And that's where things are usually kind of confusing. <laughs> you kind of trying to learn as you go, but as dreams mature, that's when you start seeing all those pieces start to come together. And they usually come together better when you own up to the situation. Okay. In order for me to grow, boom, I had to be accountable to knowing that I must do X, Y, and Z in order for me to get better. Boom. I'm going to have to take the self-responsibility to say X, Y, and Z for you. How important as someone who is growing in their career or in their business to be in that state of mind. Okay. If I really want to level up, if I really want to do this and go to the next level and do these things, I first need to recognize where I lack and see the reality. So that way I have a target where I can, you know, start from the starting point and go further down the, down the line. Yeah. I am totally on board with that. I mean, as someone that's a, a coach, I'm all about allowing yourself to be vulnerable, realizing your weaknesses and allowing other people to make up for the, those weaknesses and knowing your strengths and leaning into those strengths as much as you can. Uh, I, I personally am working weekly with a coach and then I've got two business mentors as well. And then I'm in a mastermind and I run a mastermind. And so I'm surrounding myself with people that are smarter than me and people that are contributing to me through their input, their wisdom. And then I'm able to ask some questions. They ask me questions and I would not where, be where I am in my business had it not been for those consistent meetings with those people. And in my history, I started in college, I started being mentored by uh, just an old upperclassman. When, and I remember we would meet either, it was either Wednesdays or Tuesdays. And since then, for the last 21 years, I've been meeting with actually more than 21 years to come to think of, well, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't admit it how many years it's been. But anyway, it's been close to 20 years of meeting with somebody, at least one person, if not multiple, every week to work on myself. And, and help them work on themselves so that we both can grow or the group of us can grow. And I wouldn't be the man I am if it weren't for that. I wouldn't be the husband, the father, and the business owner if it wasn't for that. But it's scary because you have to be vulnerable. And a lot of people struggle with vulnerability. But as soon as you become vulnerable and humble yourself in those circumstances, growth follows. And it may not be the growth you think it's going to be. But growth falls, and that's a guarantee. That that's a guarantee without doubt. Man, you just said something there. I don't, I don't know if you realize what you just said, man. But uh, real quick, this time before this radio, talking to Kyle Gillette. But man, what you said about the key word "follow," I want to expound on that and say, whether it's good or bad, right? Whether it's you believe in the fear or you believe in the light at the end of the tunnel, you're growing either one of those things but you're choosing which one you want to grow, right? Because the more you spend time in fear, 
the less time you have to do anything else. The more time you spend in the light in the tunnel, it's like, okay, <laughs> this is what I have to do now. Like I, live, I, I have to make these action steps and take self-responsibility to start somewhere. Because you joked about the 20 plus years, right, of checking in with so-and-so or all these different people in your life. Well, that's better than someone who spent 20 something years doing nothing. <laughs> yes. And my, my point to that is, you know, with this whole sage leadership, someone listening right now, they're like, you know what, man? Yeah. What are some of Kyle's practices that he does for himself to keep himself just motivated to get the job done? but also knowing when it's time to do self-care and, you know, relax. Cause you can't bring yourself out. You got to find a sweet spot to where you're, you're doing it, but you also are taking care of yourself as well. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, for me, I've got two, two things that I could, I could share with you kind of two categories here. One would be, I try to quit working on Fridays at about 11. Uh, 11 a.m. I quit working and then I have a CrossFit workout at noon to one. And then I get the rest of the afternoon and the weekend to do whatever I want. And then the weekend is filled with fun stuff. Like this weekend, we went snowshoeing all day long and then hung out with friends in the evening. Right. So I try to cut my week off and I try not to work too early or too late. Also, I really want to control my time when it comes to the amount of time that I work. I'm going to be extremely intentional in the time that I am working, but I want to control it so that it doesn't go beyond these parameters. Number two is I get up early every morning and sometimes it's a struggle, let's, let's admit it, but the goal is to get up every morning at 5.30 and from 5.30 to seven is the window where my kids aren't up. My wife gets up around six, but we just kind of leave each other alone <laughs> until the kids are up. And in that window, I'm reading, I'm meditating, I'm praying, I'm doing research, I'm watching stuff that helps me. Uh, but a lot of it is just rest and thinking. I found this year, especially in these first 23 days, I spend probably 20 or 30 minutes of that time just thinking. And I'm not writing anything down. I'm not reading anything. I'm just thinking. And that has brought me a lot of peace, a lot of calm, and a lot of awareness at the same time. And so that's a big chunk of it. And then on Saturday, it's a special day because Saturday I get up at the same time. But then I go through this routine where I look through my week, what was good, what wasn't good, what needs to change, those types of things. And I ask myself five questions. So here's the here's the take home for, for the listeners. Five questions, and you've all probably heard them in some form or another. But I pick a topic, you know, a, a particular topic. Sometimes I pick a kid that I want to think about, or I, or I pick a section of my business or even a client. And I go, what should I do more of as it relates to that very specific topic? What should I do less of as it relates to that topic? What should I stop doing? What should I start doing? And what should I keep doing? And then I document that. I type it out onto my, onto my iPad as I'm sitting there. And over the course of a year, what you find is these topics change you as they change, they're changing you because you're coming up with these really good insights of what you should change or what, what should stay the same. And that routine over the last, I think it's been about three and a half years now, that routine for me has been amazing when it comes to bringing that calm and bringing that clarity and bringing that progress into my business. So there's more to it than just that, but th that's a glimpse of, of how I manage the the day and the and the week to take care of myself and to move myself forward. Those are some good, like good points. I'm gonna I'm gonna steal some of those because I think that just I'm getting that 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 helps people create that healthy uh, lifestyle. Because let's just face it, <laughs> I think it's just our nature to to not always be healthy. You know, because it takes someone or something to happen, right? To encourage that change, to say, okay, okay, okay. All right. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna start doing those push-ups, or <laughs> now I'm gonna stop eating, you know, that cake all the time, you know, like it's certain things that if we're not careful, we end up in that very spot that we don't want to be in. 
Well, let me let me tell you a quick story. So in my in my book, I talk about the the accountability pass, which stands for passive active self and structures. And I was I had an F-150 a, a few years ago, and there's a check engine light that came on. And usually you want to do something about that quickly. And I knew that I needed to do something about it quickly. And so my plan was the next day to take it into the shop because I was a little concerned about it. It was random that it popped on. And and sometimes you just do the quick little reader and the reader says it's just a timing issue or it's, it's nothing that's a big deal. You need to tighten the tighten the gas cap or something silly. But you never know. So that check engine light came on and within the next 20 hours or 24 hours, whatever the window was, the engine seized on me and the truck was done. And sometimes if we're not careful, that's what can happen to us. We have to act so fast when we get those warning lights that pop up in our business, in our lives. And, but the, the catch is they're easy to miss because how many of us right now are running around in a vehicle that has some sort of a check engine light on or some sort of an engine or some sort of a light that's on? right? Or maybe it's a blinker that doesn't work anymore, but we just let it go. We let it keep on going and going and don't do anything about it. And we all do that to some degree or another in different areas of our lives. But in the book, I talk about how to overcome this. And like I said, I call it the accountability pass. And how much time do we have? Because it might take me a few minutes to explain this. Oh, we're good. We we got uh, about five more minutes. Okay, cool. So, First thing is you want to, you want to figure out what is your, what is your why? What's your compelling reason that you're doing the thing that you're doing, right? The big picture and tell that story to yourself. Tell that what's the reason behind it. For me, I want to help thousands of people shift their mindsets and habits so that their lives, their business, their hearts can be transformed, right? If they shift their mindsets and habits, they're going to, they're going to be transformed and therefore they're going to be impacting other people and transforming them as well. So that's my, that's my call, right? That's my call to action. And so I tell as many people as possible about that because it keeps me accountable to it. And that's passive accountability. That's the P in accountability pass. And then active accountability or the A in in accountability pass is where you tell 20, 30, 40 people about this dream that you have to write a book or to start a business or to make a million dollars or $10 million or whatever the goal is that you tell that deep, reasonable, not reasonable, deep, meaningful story to people. Then a few of them follow up with you and they're like, Hey, how's it going with that goal to write the book or that goal to start the business or to double your revenue or whatever it is. And of those maybe two people that follow up of the 40 that you told, those are, you want to reach out to one of them and say, Hey, would you be willing to have some conversations about this on a weekly basis? You and I could talk about what you're doing and what I'm doing. And we'll just chat for 15 minutes on the phone, or we could meet for coffee and talk about what you're trying to do and get some feedback and what I'm trying to do and get some feedback as well. That's active accountability. Then you have your structures that you put in place. The structures I mentioned, some were that those five questions that I asked myself, more of, less of, start doing, stop doing, those types of things. But then it's also your to-do list and it's your calendar and having structure around those things to make sure you're achieving that goal that you have, that compelling vision that you have for yourself. And then lastly, it's self-accountability, right? So you have passive, active structures and then self. And self-accountability is ultimately where it all falls, right? Someone can ride shotgun with me in my F-150 and point out that the the check engine light is on, but I still have to act on it, right? My to-do list can remind me to do something, but I have to still act on it. So have have you ever gone skydiving before? Oh, man. Uh... Okay. So when you, if you bungee jump or skydive, there's this point where you literally lose gravity, right? You jump out of the airplane or you jump off the bridge and there's, you cannot get back in that airplane or crawl back up on that bridge. It's not possible. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. over. What When I talk to my clients about this, I say, what is that point of no return for you in your business or in this goal or in this thing you're trying to pursue? Whatever that is, make sure you get to it as fast as you can so you cannot turn back and crawl back into that plane or get back up on that bridge. Get to the point where you're so committed that it's impossible to turn back. For me, in my business, it was basically having my wife quit a six-figure job. And it was time, it was like, okay, I'm the one now, we got to make this work. And that was that point of no return for my business. And so whatever that is for you, for your goal, or for the listeners and their goal, 
You apply those four pieces, tell a bunch of people, ask one of those people to to connect with you on a weekly basis, get it on your counter, get it in your to-do list and build that plan. And then finally, what is that thing you need to do that proves that you cannot quit on this? It is the point of no return. That's the accountability pass. Man, that's good stuff. Once again, talking to our guest, Kyle Gillette. And you can go to his website, blueshirtcoaching.com. And also you get his book on Amazon and you can go to the website. It's there on one of the tabs, but it's uh, Sage Leadership. And man, and we can talk for another 30 minutes, man. So much good points on this. But for our audience, wrapping this up, what's, what's the best uh, call to action that you would like for our listeners to take? Listen, I would say the best call to action is to listen, listen to people deeply, stare them in the eye, listen to what they have to say, listen to their body language, listen to their emotions and don't spend so much time talking, but just, just listen because you're going to learn so much when you listen, you learn way more when you listen than you do when you talk. And we can learn a little bit when we talk. That's true. But when you ask great questions of your employees, of people that are, you know, way smarter than you or in a position that you want to be in, and you just listen and be genuinely curious and empathize and deeply listen, that is going to make the difference that you want right now in your life. You do that, it's going to make a difference. Once again, talking to Kyle Gillette, you can go to his website, blueshirtcoaching.com. And also get his book, Sage Leadership, that's also on the website and Amazon. I want to say thanks, Kyle, once again, taking time out of your schedule to talk to Iron Focus Radio today. Thank you. 